Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast, inside the business, buzz, and brilliance of Black entrepreneurs. Here is your host, Dr. Francis Richards. What happens in Vegas goes all over the world on Black Entrepreneur Experience, episode number 304. Thank you for joining us as we elevate the Black Entrepreneur Experience by interviewing CEOs, thought leaders, innovative thinkers, and Black entrepreneurs across the globe. I'm your host, Dr. Francis Richards founder of the World's Data Science Institute, WDSI, a Black financial data scientist, and raising funds to launch a platform for lending and borrowing called CryptoShare. Welcome, Anande Davis. Greetings, greetings, greetings. I've given our audience such a brief bio. Why don't you fill in the gaps and share with our audience what you'd like them to know about you and your business? All right. Well, uh, I'm I'm a one thousand percent show people person. Hopefully, y'all can see what's on my screen. All right. So let me kind of show y'all what's going on with us. Right. So we are a uh, a peer to peer lending platform, and uh, as you see on WeFund, we've already raised about one hundred and sixty seven thousand. You can kind of just go through here. If you go to WeFunder.com, crypto share, WeFunder.com, crypto share. And uh, you can kind of go through our pitch deck and kind of see some of the cool things that we do. So one of the things that we really want to address with CryptoShare is there is a big decline and a big like uh, gap between African-Americans and Hispanics and the majority, right? Of the population, however you want to, you know, categorize it. We get denied loans and credit three times as much as I guess you would say uh, white people, whatever word you want to use, Hispanic, um, Caucasian people. Over 25% of the population does not have a bank account. And over 70% of the population in Latin America doesn't have a bank account either. So what does that mean? We're getting declined for credit. We don't have bank accounts. We're underbanked and unbanked. So that means it's almost impossible for us to get access to loans in the African-American and the Hispanic community. It's almost impossible. It's a lawsuit going on right now where a bunch of businessmen in real estate are suing these banks because the banks discriminated against them by giving other people with lower credit scores that are happen to be non-Hispanic or non-African-American loans and all of this stuff with lower credit scores than African-Americans with the same credit scores or higher credit scores. So my point is there is a big problem in the United States of America, specifically and Latin America, of people getting access to loan products. Over 500 million people in North and South America do not have access to loan products. So with crypto share and the invention of cryptocurrency, we have invented a whole new platform, a whole new way of peer-to-peer lending, right? Where you can take your cryptocurrency that you already own and use it as collateral to borrow money. Now, let's say you don't have cryptocurrency. That's fine. As a part of it, we have added a way for people to use physical assets that they already own to do peer-to-peer lending as well. This is like blockchain and cryptocurrency. All of this is the future, but we're doing it now, right? So it's called a blockchain smart locker. What is a blockchain smart locker? Let me show you. Like I said, I'm I'm here to show, right? And y'all can, you can see the smart locker screen, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So these are smart lockers. We've all seen these smart lockers on like Amazon delivery and all that. These are smart lockers. This is the future of peer-to-peer lending. So we want you to be able to take your cell phone. You can do peer-to-peer lending with somebody in your city or anywhere around the world. What you would do is you would take your cell phone, go to one of our crypto share smart lockers, put your cell phone in it, and that is going to be held as collateral. And if you, let's say you want to borrow, let's say I got an iPhone that's worth $10,000 or whatever, I don't know. And I want to borrow a thousand. I will put my iPhone into the smart locker. It is held there as collateral. And then if I do not make my payments back on time, the collateral is then released to the lender or crypto share. We will mail it to the lender. All right. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking the period, we're taking borrowing and lending and we're creating our own communities like the old days like how they used to do back in the day in communities where they literally built peer-to-peer lending communities and we're doing the same thing using cryptocurrency and assets that you already own that is the power of crypto share now first let me ask you do you have any questions about what i just explained 
Because if you don't I, understand it, your viewers don't understand it. So I'm gonna ask you, do you have any No, questions? that is that so how did you get into cryptocurrency? So I got in the I got into cryptocurrency because first I, I got into stocks first. I'm a financial data scientist too, by the way. Just to let everybody know. I'm a financial data. I went to drive, I went from driving Uber to a data scientist in about two years. That's why I'm telling, I'm telling everybody like. We all love college. We went to college, got degrees. But moving forward, I'm telling people, college degrees are no longer requirements like they were. Even Donald Trump, you can Google this, made a law saying that you no longer need to have a college degree to get a job. He actually made this a federal order. He said now the government is prioritizing cert certifications and like associate degrees and stuff like that over four year college degrees which I'm so glad because I think a lot of people are moving away from college degrees. All right. So I, when I got into data science, I got into finance. That's what made me a financial data science. I got into finance. And when I got into finance, I actually learned about finance in general. So in that process, it, was, it forced me to learn about stocks. It forced me to learn about bonds. It forced me to learn about all of these financial products that exist. It forced me to learn about cryptocurrency. All it, it's so many different financial instruments and products that exist. The problem is in our community, we're like, like people are distracting us with music and movies and drama and all of these different things instead of like the stuff we need to actually be learning to give us generational wealth, like whole life insurance and how to actually invest in stocks and how to actually invest in crypto. So I started in that space. And naturally, through that space, I was able to start learning about these different asset classes and these different financial products. And that's when I got into cryptocurrency. And the more I got into cryptocurrency, I started realizing about blockchain because I was introduced with cryptocurrency. But blockchain is where crypto. So blockchain creates cryptocurrency. For those of you that don't know, blockchain is the alpha, the omega, the God. Cryptocurrency is the children. All right. So cryptocurrency. So blockchain creates cryptocurrency. But blockchain does way more than just create cryptocurrency. A lot of people don't realize. Sorry for this. I got a window right here. But blockchain actually creates what's called smart contracts, which is basically a digital contract. It's the same technology that we use with crypto share to where if you put your phone in the smart locker for collateral, because we're using a digital contract, if you miss a payment, you can't call me and make excuses. The block the, is automatic. You automatically lose access to your collateral. You automatically lose it because the, the same security, like once you close it, you can't access it anymore anyway. So a new code is generated using the smart contract. A new code is generated and the lender now has access to the collateral. They can physically come and pick it up or we can mail it to them. But blockchain does a lot of things. So I always tell people before you get so gung ho, and investing your money in cryptocurrency, take a month. Life is long. Take a month. You got time. If you can watch a three-hour basketball game on TV or four-hour football game, you can take an hour to just Google blockchain and you can understand it. Just watch a couple of videos, follow Earn Your Leisure, follow this channel. Like, Do your best to learn as much as you can about blockchain. So that's how I got into it. I actually started off in finance. And through that process, I actually got into cryptocurrency. Now, when I hear what you're saying, Anande, this is what's interesting. There are so many laws when you talk about credit, mortgages, that really penalize being poor. When I'm hearing what you're saying about collateral, how is that not causing our people to be more destructive and end up poorer? Let me show you. So. Let's go back to the pitch deck, right? So now, on one of the biggest issues here, this is, this is the data. African-Americans and Hispanics are disproportionately used, forced to use, because we have FICO statistics that African-Americans have the lowest credit scores in the United States. So that's number one. Over everybody, we got the lowest. So that means we're already not getting access to loans. Number two, discrimination, we already know that exists. African-Americans and Hispanics are disproportionately forced to use pawn shop loans. They're called fringe banks. Pawn shop loans, cash advance loans, which you all heard about, are banned in 14 states. That's how bad cash advance loans are. And we've probably all gotten. 
I had one so bad, my interest rate was literally over 300 some percent. I just, I, I just let my credit go. I, I had to, because I could never pay it back. And because we are put in this position, and it's, a lot of this is self-inflicted, because but a lot of the time, the community, like the infrastructure puts us in this position, we're all, we're forced to, to use high interest loans, which literally can be charged up to 500%. Literally, when you go to a pawn shop, the interest is ridiculous. When you use cash advance, it's ridiculous. When you use all these different things, it's ridiculous. So we have created an alternative to all of that. If you go down here, where we're showing, I don't know how good you can see this, but where we're showing you, let me blow this up just a little bit, where we're showing you here that our interest rates will be capped at 20%. If you see here, it's in the, they'll be capped at 20%. All right. And payday loans, legally, they can be up to 500%. Pawn shop loans, legally, they can be up to 240%. Different states have different laws. So this is stuff that you already own. This is not you having to buy new stuff. So instead of going to a pawn shop and not getting the actual price of whatever you're trying to get money for, you can use crypto share. And we essentially are going to be replacing pawn shop and working with some to where instead of dealing with them, you can directly deal with us. Because think about it. When COVID happened, you couldn't even get another pawn shop. How was you going to get money? So with crypto share, we have created these a, play, a way to do peer-to-peer -peer lending with each other, without a middleman. If you consider us a middleman, but we're here just to provide the platform. So it's gonna it's gonna go back to the same way. It's it's just like lending your friend a hundred dollars. Be like, hey bro, I'm gonna let you hold my J's. You hold my Jordans. Give me this hundred dollars. If I don't pay you by next week, you had a Jordan. Even though they're too small, you can have the Jordans. We're essentially doing the same thing, and we're cutting at the interest at twenty percent. So our people and people in Latin America, because uh, because I told um, Dr. Richards here that I have a big presence in Colombia. I've been doing business in Colombia for two years now. All right. So I have it's a lot of things that I've been doing in Colombia as well. So it's people in Latin America that's going through the same thing, especially people of color, because people think and I ain't here to preach, but people think we're different. You start coming to these foreign countries, Colombia, Brazil, Venezuela. I'm telling y'all, they look like you. I'm telling y'all that right now. I can have my wife's mother come in here right now, which I am, so y'all can see her skin color. Amor, keep going though, keep going. I'm gonna have her do that, but because y'all need to see, we're not as we're not as opposite as we think. And I get it, the, the Mexicans and stuff that we see in the United States are light skin. But if you go to Mexico, I'm telling you, most of the people in Mexico are dark-skinned Mexicans. They look just like me and you. So I just wanted to throw that in there. It's interesting, and this is a whole nother subject when you talk about skin color and yeah. different nationalities. And one of the things that I've learned over the years is in every nationality, there is dark complexion, like people from Israel and other cultures. There are dark complexion people. Yep. And the irony is, but we know is that like, if you're a darker Israeli, you are discriminated against. And it's the same thing when you talk about Latin America in, in those countries, that's why they call it whitewashing where wow. Latinos, they will actually say that they're white, even though yep. they are not. And they're taught to be, it's better to be white than dark. It is happening across the globe, that whole colorism and discriminating because you are of a, like a black or a darker complexion, which is a travesty. It is, it is. And we're here to, to combat that as much as possible. We're doing something different. We're here to bridge a gap that exists between African Americans and Afro South Americans, because it's a real, like it's a real community. Like I said, over five hundred million of us. That's a lot of people. By the way, that's more people than the United States population. Like it's South America is a huge, like that. That's why for us, we're launching the United States. But a big part of what we're going to be doing with our company is going to be situated in Latin America because it's it's, it's so much opportunity. There's so many people that need to be serviced. Like a lot of stuff that we we don't like 
think about because we live in the United States. We don't realize that those same ideas. And this is another thing, too. I know we're getting a little off, but I encourage people, black men and black women specifically, or whatever you want to identify as people of color, you have if you're if you can go and buy a passport. It will change the way you look at the world. It'll change your reality. And, and, I'm, and I'm gonna be honest with you. It's just, even let's talk about relationships. I know it's women saying certain black women saying, "Oh man, there ain't no men left," and all of that. Okay, that's because you live in South Carolina. Go to Atlanta. Don't work in Atlanta. Go to Miami. Good. Don't find excuses why you can't move. Figure out how you can. And then if none of that's working, we should really start seeing like you see other these famous rappers right now. A lot of them, Ludacris, Akon. A lot of them are starting to get dual citizenships. In African countries and South American countries, even millionaire, I think the owner of Twitter and all these people, Jeff, Steve Jobs, they talk all talking about migrating to Africa because they see that in the next 20 years. And I know you know this in the next 20 years, the United States is going to look like us. It's going to look like African-Americans and Hispanics. So I'm saying now we need to bridge that gap now. You can Google it. About, I think they said what, 2030, 2050, 2035, 2050, America is going to be majority african-americans and hispanics do you have dual citizenship not yet but i can get it um i haven't got it yet. you got to be here for two years to get dual citizenship oh uh, i haven't i have not gotten it but i can get it because i got children here but it hasn't been something that i've been like trying to run and jump and do because like i said I, I am still from the united states i'm still an american I'm, I'm still all that good stuff and um i don't even know if i'm going to live here does your, does your kids have dual citizenship? I haven't. Columbia, yes. I haven't registered them in the United States yet. And, and I got my own reasons for that. One of them is, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest here. I don't ever want my children to have a identity problem. Does that make sense? Like, I don't, I don't ever want, like, I want them, like, they're born in Columbia. I want them to be Colombian. And later in life, if they want to travel to the U.S., become a U.S. citizen, I'm their father, I'm a U.S. citizen, they can do that. But I, I don't want it to be a situation where they go to U.S. young, somebody called them an N-word, and now they don't know who they are, and now they're doing weird stuff, experimenting. This is a big part of what happens in our community that people don't talk about, identity issues. Because just because I'm an African-American man, I may, be, I may be in a place where I'm hanging around a lot of Caucasian people, and they think, because I'm black and dressed, I smoke weed, or I'm hood, or I'm ghetto, or I'm any of that. And now I got to kind of fall into those stereotypes because I want to, you know what I mean? And, and I always say, I don't, I don't want my children to have that issue. Like you can, they can identify to whatever they want to identify with, but if they go to the United States, they're going to be going to the United States as Columbia. If that makes sense. Someone is looking at the screen and they're saying you've raised $167,000. Is that in cryptocurrency or is that in USA dollars? That is in USA dollars. That is in US dollars. So, yeah, and we've been raising money for about five months. We're about five, maybe six months, but we had a, that's a whole nother story. We had an issue with WeFunder. We we felt like it was some type of, I ain't going to get into it, but they were saying that they don't allow companies in cryptocurrency on their website. And I, and I reached out to them. I said, that's funny because I'm seeing four other companies that's involved in cryptocurrency that are non-black. And y'all literally have a category on WeFunder called cryptocurrency. But yet, y'all have a problem with our company being on here. So I've been through a lot. People don't know. I've been through a lot to fight, but it's $167,000. I mean, we, I've been through a lot. Talk about raising money. And was there a reason you went with WeFunder versus Republic? Yes. Republic, they denied us. They, they, didn't, they denied us. WeFunder gave us a chance. We tried to start engine. They denied us. Like I, and I don't want to say racism, but WeFunder was the only one that gave us a chance. Now they they, they took their cut now. And uh, we had a lot of issues with them at first, but I'm gonna tell you what happened. This is a true story. It's actually, um, let me see, is it on our page? Uh, let me see if it's on our traction page. All right, so I don't have it here, but we, we went through a situation with uh, WeFunder at first and the actual situation was, like I said, they were trying to get us off of the platform but we ended up winning a um, we went we ended up getting into a, an accelerator. And in this accelerator, a part of the winning that was we got a, a, an attorney called Morrison and Forster. And if you never heard of Morrison and Forster, they're a billion dollar law firm. Morrison and Forster. Let me pull it up now. 
They are a billion billion dollar law firm. So if I Google Morris and Force the revenue, you will see they are a literal legit billion dollar law firm. Legit. So we won a so we got into a um like a they call it accelerators. We got into an accelerator with them. We beat out a lot of companies. So as the when you win the accelerator, what happens is you get free legal representation from Morris and Forrester, which you got to understand. This is a billion dollar law firm. So to get them to represent us for some of the stuff we, we needed them to do, like we're working on a, a seven figure deal right now to get them involved. They would cost us literally thousands of dollars. But because we got into the contest, we get it for free. So when we approach we funded with the lawyer, guess who got the same lawyer? We are we there. We ended up, we all got the same lawyer now. So when we all got the same lawyer, it was a whole different conversation where we everything's been great since then. I'm telling you, this is this is why I'm saying to people, we all got dreams, we all got hopes. I wanted to be in NBA on five nine. Learn finance first, though. If you're young enough now, if you're 16, 17, if you got kids, learn finance first. Everything else they can add. Because when they become a famous rapper, how are they gonna spend their money? They're gonna hire an accountant that's gonna rob them. Do they know how to do their own taxes? We have to teach finance before anything else. Because finance is just it, it, it doesn't sound sexy and entertaining. And in my opinion, we talked about this a little bit before. In my opinion, everything else is cool. But laws and all of that, we need that. We need that. But one thing we can do ourselves without approval from anybody as African-American people and Hispanic people in the United States is learn, anybody really, is learn financial intelligence. And you can, and this is, I'm going to tell y'all what I did. I'm going to tell y'all what I literally did. And I'm going to show y'all right now what I did. I literally Googled books about wealth. Start there. Start there. And it and it eventually gets you into where you need to be. Just start there. I read the Million X. I read all of these books: Rich Dad Poor Dad, Richest Man in Babylon, all of that stuff. So start there, and I'm I'm guaranteeing you eventually you will upgrade that to. Let me learn how to trade stocks. Let me learn how to like buy and trade stocks for real, not just because my friend told me he made fifty thousand with Tesla. But let me look at earnings per share. Let me look at volatility rate. Let me look at beta score. Let me look at return on investment, price to cash flow ratio. It sounds confusing, but it's only because you don't know it. But if you pick up a book and just read it for an hour a day on finance, I'm telling you, it will change your life because you know what you're going you're to start doing? You're going to start teaching other people and they're going to start teaching other people and they're going to start teaching other people. That's, that's the real way, in my opinion, for us to have freedom, generational wealth. You mentioned about COVID-19. Talk about pivoting and COVID-19 in your business? So COVID-19 actually was a big part of creating a business because what happened is it created a situation where a lot of the issues that I was dealing with, another issue, which is on a pitch deck, digital wallet. One of the biggest issues that I had during COVID was I was trying to open up a Black-owned bank account. I mean, I tried everywhere, everywhere. All of them kept saying, eventually, I had to come in person. I was like, but I can open, but I, but I, I, ended, I tried it. I couldn't do it. So I just ended up opening up a bank account, three bank accounts, all of them online from white owned bank because they had that capability. Because at first I was like, man, we need to create something to where we can work with black owned banks to pretty, because we're data scientists, we're engineers. I'm a data scientist. But like we do this for real. We don't cap. Like we don't have to hire a company from Ukraine. We do this and we do everything in house. That's why. When I used to do these before, people used to be like, why are y'all only raising this amount of money? I'm like, because we know how to do it. We like, if, if, if you know how to fix your car, if you got a time, you're, why, why, if you got a time, you know how to fix your car, why are you going to take it to the dealer? Because you like spending a whole bunch of money. So in that case, we created CryptoShare also does this. It creates what's called a digital wallet, which gives you an instant bank account. So that way you don't worry. You don't have to worry about getting. And this is big in Latin America as well. I created a bank account in Latin America. It took me three hours. Their process is ridiculous. And even sometime in the United States, how long does it take to get a debit card? It might take a week to get a debit card. You know, you, you create the bit online and then it might take a week. Now, sometimes you can go inside of a place to get it, but let's say you don't have time. So we created a platform to where you get an instant digital wallet, AKA a bank account. And inside of that digital wallet, it's the same digital wallet that allows you to borrow and lend money. Does that make sense? 
It allows you to do everything in a digital wallet. You can create a bank account. You can lend and borrow money. We have created a one-stop shop with CryptoShare to allow people to do that. And all of that came was because of COVID-19 because I realized, like, man, I can't even open up a bank account for my house. I got to go inside. And then if I if I want to use a, digi- a digital a, a debit card, I got to wait for a debit card to be mailed to me. What if I want to buy something right now? So a crypto share, you can create an account instantly and get a digital debit card instantly and load money instantly. So if you want to buy crypto, you can. If you want to buy a shirt off Amazon, if you want to shop with Dr. Richards, whatever you want to do, you can do that instantly with crypto share. There are so many brands and businesses that are dominating. Talk about a brand or businesses dominating that you admire and why. It's a company that I really love, man. It's, it's in South America. It's called Rappi. Like, Rappi is like, like they, they the goats. They the goats of this. Like, I feel like if we had Rappi in the United States, which I, I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't eventually come, but Rappi essentially is what it takes four apps in the United States to do. They have in one app in Rappi. The only thing they don't have is like you can't buy cryptocurrency, but they got everything else. Like you can load money, you can send money, you can get credit lines, you can buy groceries, you can get delivery service. People deliver you cash. Like if you need a hundred dollars, you can have somebody deliver you a hundred dollars in person, like cash. Like now, Colombia is a different. Now it's all around South America. It's all around. So it's, it's a big company. It's a billion dollar company. So it's not like a small mom and pop company. But I really like them. So imagine PayPal, but on steroids. And we want to be a we want to kind of be a black owned mixture in the game with all of them. Because uh, essentially what all of them do is called digital wallet. PayPal is a digital wallet for those of y'all that didn't know. Cash App is a digital wallet. Zelle is a digital wallet. Go ahead. But, but when you think about that, PayPal is a little antiquated. Because when you talk about the digital wallet and the speed of getting money, and I was talking to another millennial who was mentioning that I believe one of the reasons they got into cryptocurrency or whatever the digital wallet is because they wanted to buy a car and they didn't have time to wait. And so they were able to buy a car right away, however they did it. And so we see how fast things are happening with you know, care what what is it, caravan or carvan or whatever, where before we're a Carvana. Carvana. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you for that. I don't butcher their name. But what I was gonna say for people that have PayPal, and I do have PayPal, and I'm not a spokesperson for PayPal, is if I want to transfer money, it still takes three to four days for that money to go into PayPal. Yeah, and sometimes PayPal, they charge ridiculous fees. Like, it depends. Sometimes PayPal is fast, but you're right. Sometimes PayPal is fast and it does instant. But sometimes, everybody know what I'm talking about. Sometimes they do this weird stuff where they make you hold money. I had a big issue with PayPal where they, like, hold your money for a week. Some of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, I had a client and they sent me, like, $1,500. And they were like, oh, you never. I had just opened it. They were like, you haven't got this amount ever. And um, because of that, we freezing your account. It's like, what? So now I got $1,500 just sitting in there and I can't even get access. And they're, and they're, they're earning interest versus, and this is interesting about cash app. Cash app is truly immediately cash. Now for what, now my friend was telling me like one of the things she'll even like, if, if, if we change money, exchange money and I will not cash it out until the two or three days. And she'll even send me extra money to cash it out early and I still won't do it. Why? Because I don't want them to take any extra money. I have a, I have oh, a challenge. See, my thing is, yeah. and even when I have family members that do Walmart to Walmart, I'm like, can't you mail it or do it another way? And that's where we started this conversation, how the poor is being penalized for being poor and they're losing a lot of money. So I remember back in the day when I would send my son money, he's in another state. And even though it was only $5 to to go from my bank to the credit union, which things have really changed. Even that $5, five times 12 is $60. If you need that money, 
you need that $60. You need that $5. We're spending money on, you know, iPhones. People are not batting an eye on to spend $1,500 or $1,700 on an iPhone or getting their nails done or weaves or whatever. I'm not against any of that, but we're talking about generational wealth. Generational wealth, exactly. And intergenerational wealth. And what, what legacy? And that's my next question to you. When it's all said and done, how do you want to be remembered? How do well, you want your legacy to be set? I'm glad you said that. I, I talk to my wife all the time about branding. What I mean is my wife has this thing where she likes to buy, like, designer stuff. But she know how I am. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very frugal. You know what I'm saying? I'm very frugal. But I'm frugal for a reason. I got a wife and two kids. We, but we got everything we need. We got insurance, three-story house. We got all of the real stuff that we need. So I don't spend, I do my best not to spend. I got Skechers, okay? So I do I do my best not to spend money on Jordans and all of that and all of that other stuff. But I do buy nice stuff for myself every now and then. But the thing is, because she knows that, she likes to buy, like, knockoff designer stuff. And I'm like, but just buy something different and completely. Just buy something that's fly that don't got a name to it. Like, what, what's the point of buying a fake, whatever they, Birkin, per whatever they call it. Like, what's the point of doing that? Well, you can just buy a real no-name thing or a different name when it's fly. And I think that's why a lot of our people in general are not even just our people. Like I said, Latin America, it's the same stuff. We just don't see it because we're United States. But it's the same stuff here. People that kind of don't have a lot of money are spending all of their money on, like, stuff that it's like why would you spend all of this money on these shades why would you spend all of that money on that so i think the best way for us to get over that i think is if we start actually putting our money into like you said things that are and i I get it it's not sexy it's it's not whatever but i think we got to start branding ourselves and putting our families and ourselves in the direction of focusing on stuff that actually bring value back to what we do and i always try to bring value that's my brand i try to bring value in my legacy to everything we're teaching a free stock class saturday i don't even have a link for you but i can send it to her she can send it out but we're, we're teaching the free stock class we so what we do is we add a price to it but we know how our people are we add a price to it and we get them a promo code and i know that sounds weird but like i said i've been doing with my people for a long time if you say it's free nobody will come but if you give it a price and say, here's the promo code, people will come. Our people will come. There's a video. And I'm going to say this last thing because I know we're running out of time. I got a meeting here as well in about seven minutes. But there's a video that's so real. I want everybody to that's watching this or listening to this, however y'all are getting it. And I'm going to share my screen really quick because I think this is very important because a lot of y'all may not know, it or know about this. And let me see. I'm going to share it really quick. So a lot of y'all may not know about this, but this is real. This is real. This is a, hopefully y'all can see that this is a whole curriculum that was created in the 1950s called The Secret of Selling the Negro. This is real. If you go on YouTube, find time. This is a whole, and when you hear this stuff, you're like, wow, we have been brainwashed for real. This is a, this is like, this is a strategy. This is real. We have to stop being consumers and become sellers. And I'm going to show y'all this last little thing, right? Crypto share, we're also getting into these as well. It's called cryptocurrency ATM. If you got five to 10 grand, you need to be purchasing a cryptocurrency ATM. Point blank, period. Because you can get them right now for as low as, let me see if I can find a name. You can get them, you can get a cryptocurrency ATM right now for as low as four grand. Let me see here. Instead of, because we all go to ATMs. We all go to ATMs. And instead of, and let me just show you really because I can't find the other one. But you see right here, as low as $4,500. And there's other investment opportunities. But my point is, we have to stop consuming so much in our community and figure out, all right, well, how do I become a seller? So instead of me going to ATMs every day, pulling money out, instead of me just investing in cryptocurrency, let me buy a cryptocurrency ATM machine. Let me be a part of the grind. Let me be a part of that. So I just wanted to throw that in there. That was an excellent question. Thank you for asking me that. If you conducted the interview, what is the one question you would have asked yourself that you didn't ask, that I didn't ask? And I want you to ask the question and answer it. How did you go from where you're at now 
to essentially being a millionaire in data science. And I tell them, and this is something that's important as well, and I, I really want people to understand this. I really want people to understand this. And the reason I say that is because my, my business right now is actually worth $8 million. I own 90% of that business. So you do the whole math. Reading, 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 reading and focus. That's how I did it. But everybody is different. That's how I did it within three years. I went from driving Uber to being a millionaire in data science in three years. How, do I, how did I do it? Focus and reading. It's that simple. And what I mean when I say focus and reading, I was celibate for a year. I told myself, I said, I'm not going to do that again until I learn how to effing code. And I did it. I learned it. And my first job as a data scientist, I got paid $165 an hour by a company called General Assembly. You understand? And this came from focus and celibacy. I, got, I stopped watching the NBA. I love the Clippers. I love Kawhi. But then I'm like, dude, I'm sitting there. And that's why I get on people. Now. I, I just watched three hours. I took three hours out of my life into a bar or my home to watch an NBA game or a football game or whatever it is that's really not helping me in my personal life. But if I put half of that energy, not even the whole three hours, into actually learning something that'll make me a millionaire, it's going to make me a millionaire. And it did. That's awesome. We've come to the part of our interview. It's called Fun Facts Lightning Round. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I want you to give me very quick answers. If there is something you desire not to answer, feel free to say pass. Okay. Are you ready for the Fun Facts Lightning Round? Let's go. Your first job. I tell you my worst job. I don't remember my first job, but my worst job was delivering phone books. That was a terrible job. Your favorite color. Blue. The last movie you saw. It wasn't the last movie I seen, but I think what I'm about to say is more important. The most important movie I've ever seen, besides the movie Malcolm X, was a movie called American Skin. You must watch it. The dude Nate Parker made it. Nate Parker. Nate Parker. American Skin. Most important movie I've ever seen. You relax doing what? I gotta look that up in the dictionary. But honestly, I, lately, because I just got a, a recliner chair and a TV, we have, I haven't had a TV in like three, four years, just bought one literally like a month ago. So honestly, now watching TV, enjoying my, enjoying my kid, I know that sounds corny, but I, I literally like my daughter, my big daughter, she's one years old, have her right there watching TV like I'm good. Your favorite singer or rapper? It changes. I, I, I'm going to tell you the GOAT used to be Biggie Smalls to me. But I have to give it to Jay-Z because he got the woman, he got the business, the longevity. Snoop is on that list, too. A lot of people don't say Snoop Dogg, but I think people really need to listen to that 444 album. Like, seriously, go back and listen to that. Your favorite dance song? I don't know, man. I, I, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm spending so much time at Columbia, man. It's, it's everyone on the radio. So, But I would tell you my favorite artist here. Matter of fact, um, I, I don't even remember the name, but one of the good artists here, J Balvin. Definitely check him out. What food you eat every week, no matter what? They're called, uh, it might be every week. I don't know if it's every week, but it's, it's, it's called, they're called Cordonese eggs. I don't eat regular eggs. I, I do my best to be a diet guy, but they're called quail eggs, which are, which are healthy eggs. Even though you're still eating the animal, but they are very small quail eggs. Love them. They have a different taste than like eggs. Have, eggs have like this specific taste, but I like quail eggs. Your favorite month? I'm going to say July, my birthday month. Work out or hit the couch? Hit the couch. What I like to do, hit the couch. Anande, thank you so much for joining us on Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast. Before we let you go, why don't you share with the audience the best way for them to connect with you and do business with you and feel free to leave all of your social media handles? Well, one of the major things is you can reach me at wefunder.com slash crypto share. That's one. That's what I just, I'm there all the time. I'm leaving updates all the time. I'm, I'm leaving comments all the time. I'm there all the time. I'm not really a, uh, a, a, like I said, it's, it's about what's making me wealthy. And I know some people figured out how to do Instagram. Like there's a guy right now. I know he's a millionaire on there. He figured he got all these, but that's just not my thing. So I'm not really Instagram, none of that. So you can catch me there or you can catch me on LinkedIn. That's it. LinkedIn and WeFunder. LinkedIn. Just type in Anade Data Scientist, A-N-A-D, Data Scientist, type in CryptoShare, something, my name will pop up somewhere, CryptoShare, and yeah, that's how you can reach out to me. Thank you. That's a wrap.
Thank you for listening and subscribing to Black Entrepreneur Experience. We would love for you to leave a review and rating on iTunes and share with your friends. For show notes and more episodes, go to www.beepodcast.com. Join us next Wednesday. And remember, green is the new black. So keep your bank accounts and your business in the black.